morning, my friends of hemp engineering. Today is a great day, and, and my heart is pumping of happiness and sharing an extraordinary interview that we will do with uh, Mrs. Michiel Istanbik. Uh, Mrs. Michiel is a candidate for the Senate in Canberra and she is running with the Legalized Cannabis Party. My name is Ramon Granados. Uh, we are broadcasting from him from Perth, Australia. Hello, Michelle, welcome to our Hello. show. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, the pleasure is mine. And the words that we have um, pre previously shared before our interview, uh, give me hope uh, because uh, quite honestly, I find in your words uh, the passion that the community needs to engage with um, the movement or the revolution that we are trying to lead, not just in Australia, but worldwide. Yes, that is correct. Michelle, tell us about yourself and what you do and on the top of this uh, uh, candid candidacy. And um, how did you end up in the hem no. revolution? I know, right. It's a bit of a story. And I think we've all got the story to tell. It's a journey. It's, let's just start. It might have started about 10 years ago. Um, I was at the time working as a registered nurse in aged care. So I started to uh, think about help, you know, I was looking at my residents that I was looking after thinking there has to be a better way. Uh, aged care has a lot of issues. Okay, so we, uh, you know, when it comes to the health of our older people, that, that was my primary concern. So at that time, I started to think about uh, what other things can we do to make or improve the lives of these people. So uh, I guess I had a bit of time and I started researching and then I found out about cannabis. Now I've already known about cannabis because I don't think there's probably not anybody that doesn't know what cannabis, you know, know about cannabis. But for it to be used in healthcare was a novel idea in Australia because it, obviously clearly it only was medically legal in 2016. Yes. So 2013, I started my journey. I started, you know, getting on the internet and looking up. Then I found out about the American cannabis. Cannabis Nurses Association and I thought wow who are these people um, and then in 2014 I started a master's which a master's degree which is palliative care and aged care yeah. and my plan at the beginning of that was to do research into the use of cannabis in older people and so then in 2014 I went over to America and I, I mostly California clearly because at the time that's where it was happening. That's, you know, so then I met up with a whole bunch of very uh, amazing nurses um, that have actually revolutionized cannabis in America. Uh, so I met up with them and I saw the data for myself and that was it. I, I started to change my way I thought about cannabis because we grow up, well, it's indoctrinated into us that cannabis is bad. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of absolute nonsense that clearly now after nearly 10 years, I, 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 I've, I've seen through that. And so I, I can only see uh, many, many positive benefits. So when you're working with older people, the, the benefits are very easily identifiable. And that is, well, cannabis will reduce polypharmacy. Cannabis works systematically. So it's going to deal with all those different medical conditions and currently we know that on top of primary diagnoses in aged care, we know that really the three other diagnoses that they often have combined are depression, anxiety, and pain. So what does cannabis do? It, it helps all those things. So for many, for many patients, it's a great way to get off the polypharmacy um, trail reduce those medications and I've had, and, and it does work because I've seen the data for myself. Um, increased quality of life. So really it started from that. That's where I was really focused on my clients and well, how can I improve their lives? 
And then I then started education. So then I went back to America in 2015. I actually received a scholarship uh, through Patients Out of Time, who are a very famous patient orientated organization over there. And they partner up with a lot of organizations such as the American Cannabis Nurses Association and so forth. So I went over there with a scholarship. Then I did my education in cannabis, met amazing people, came back. And then it was a bit of a letdown because in Australia, we're still, we're still way behind. So uh, 2016 is when we made it available. But the reality is we're far from, we're really far away from getting it out there because the problem is that the costs uh, pretty much stop people being able to to either start cannabis or to remain on cannabis. Uh, most people that take it are chronic disease patients uh, or they take it for therapeutic effects in terms of just relaxing and de-stressing. So initially I started off with a you know that question mark over my head thinking, I'm not sure about cannabis. Is it safe? Is it not safe? 10 years later, here I am as a candidate in the legalized cannabis party. Uh, I think that tells you what I've learned. My journey has been that cannabis is highly safe, highly therapeutic, uh, can be used for pretty much most medical conditions. It's an excellent anti-inflammatory. It's an excellent preventative. No one's even talking about that here. The preventative um, side um, is um, amazing. I mean, Chell, more important that in the history of cannabis that is linked to humanity, there has not been one case of death. A hundred percent. You know, Michelle, I'm listening to you. Um, uh, most people are, are not guilty for not knowing about hemp or cannabis. It, Americans uh, in the 40s decided for their particular benefit and interest of some uh, industries that are the ones that are damaging the environment, the planet and the people. They implemented the, this prohibition and this prohibition in fact is a colonization tool um, um, and a direct dictatorship in all countries on earth. So, um, however, the Americans have also taken the leadership to dismantle all this uh, system that clearly have been only uh, damaging the planet. So here we are, uh, there is no more time to hesitate in turn around the loss that we know that cannabis is safe. We know that cannabis is the solution. What we need to dismantle is the interest of some corporations and governments that are linked together so that it doesn't happen. So um, this is the main issue here. That's you know, right. What? So the most, yes, I'm sorry. That's all, please, please, I get emotion with you talking about all this. Oh, no, I'm very passionate about it. I don't, st I talk about cannabis 24, I, I, if I could talk about it 24 by 7, I would. And it's a bit of a running joke in my family and my friends because I've been, I actually have been told to keep my voice down when I talk about cannabis because people are worried the cops are going to ro rock up. Um, I don't have that fear. I don't have any fear because what's there to be fearful of? It is a, it, it's what you call, I, I've, I've got a herbalist background as well, currently not practicing either as a nurse or a herbalist, but uh, it's a master plant. It really is considered a master plant because it contains, you know, well, what we know is what 500 constituents that we know, we know of. Uh, and all of the, every single one of those things is, it has got a therapeutic benefit. And I mean, the great thing is, I think the pro I, I know myself when I'm looking after my endocannabinoid system, uh, and you can do that through your diet and, and many other things. Uh, you know, it's quite an interesting system. I, I'm obsessed with the endocannabinoid system, um, and of course, as we know, you know, hemp is a very important part of the endocannabinoid system because it contains omega threes and many other nutrients that in in essence hemp is a complete 
uh, nutritional package for yes. us. Um, so I currently yes. have a business as well that I'm setting up called the ECS Wellness Collective, and I am selling hemp-based products because the, the, their applications are amazing. And I've got a couple of novel products, but I won't go into that now. Uh, I'll leave it as a surprise. But yes, there's some really interesting products out there. And also combined with terpenes, you can, you, you know, we're talking about, and there's a lot more research coming out about that as well. So we're seeing there are going to be numerous applications for hemp and terpene, you know, plant-based medicines combined with cannabis. I think we're on the cusp of a, of a health revolution. I just don't think, I think we're, we're still uh, got one foot in the old, but we need to move that foot into the new. And I think because of what we've been going through for the last two and a half years, which has been very difficult for most people, sure. um, we've, got an, uh, we've got an opportunity now to really grab those reins, push the health benefits, and also just allowing personal freedoms. Um, hemp is safe. I think it's a wonderful way to unwind after a stressful day uh, rather than drinking alcohol. Sure. And again, you know, what we want to do is we just, that the health benefits far outweigh any of the negative benefits that we've been told. So we're, the Cannabis Party is about us changing that narrative and flipping that so people understand that a lot of the narrative that we've been fed has been disproven the evidence has now disproven many of those things so what we're trying to do is is uh, stop the fear let's focus on the positive aspects because they outweigh the negative so it's and what we do is we we repeat that and the, the you know I, I i think more and more people now are willing to 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 come out to come out and support it because you remember too there's still fear here that if you do come out and support it the cops are going to be knocking on your door and you're going to go to jail. Um, but law reform is very important here. Uh, we'd like to see people who have been jailed and remain incarcerated for cannabis offences. We want all of those convictions expunged. Yeah. We want them to be free. Um, and also, why can't they, you know, some, some, some of the most passionate growers uh, of cannabis and who know a lot are treated as, you know criminals here and it's a real shame because they've got fantastic skills well um, and mathematically speaking and <laughs> mathematically speaking and i cannot talk any other way but as an engineer uh, you're a classic that my, my father's engineering background as well so <laughs> mathematically i know speaking, very for, logical highly logical for those who support cannabis that do not that do not support cannabis they support crime under the table and somehow they're getting benefit out of it. And that's yes. all bottom line. Um, having said that, um, what are your expectations in, in, in the hemp business? Wow. Well, uh, this year I found out because I've, with my business, I was looking at getting some t-shirts I love the textile industry myself too and then I, I found out after I did some investigation we have no hemp textile industry in Australia mm -hmm. I'm aware of that yes. so everything's coming from China and uh is it Bangladesh India that sort of yeah. region yeah. that's disappointing because I think we could do a great job here uh and I mean I know when I was in the U.S. back in 2015 and uh, people would meet me and say where are you from and they all, as soon as they found out I was Australian, they said, you guys, you guys grow the best hemp. And so yeah. we have got a reputation because, you know, our climate and so forth. I, I just think we, the applications for hemp, uh, why, 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 you know, my question is, why are we still in the dark ages? <laughs> like, well, um, holding us back. Like, it was very simple, Michelle. Like I said, uh, United States have implemented. Uh, worldwide dictatorship. Uh, Australia is very well aligned politically with the Americans. Americans basically uh, don't want to say that dictate our policies because ours are more linked with the UK. But it's still yeah. both countries are very supportive of the prohibition. But yes. the prohibition is dying, it's agonizing. It, this is the right time for Australians to stand up, um, 
take the space that we need of our independence to make this our own because we have a small population and we can become a hub of this new economic or circular economy in the world. We can become an example of what can be done and what cannot be done. We have extraordinary people working in the hemp industry from Tasmania to Perth to all the way down to Queensland. And all we need to do is just very simple, change, change the law. That's right. Yes. That's right. So I think a big part of the legalized cannabis Australia, well, their policy, you know, is law reform is, is massive. Um, so yeah, that's what we're working on. I mean, look, to be honest, the hemp side is, is I think it's a specialized area in itself. Uh, and so I think the more people that we can get to come on board uh, with that background and with that knowledge, I think, yeah, I think we will have the capacity to make change, but it is hard work and it's constant lobbying of the government. I think that more MPs that can come in that say, for example, Dr. Brian Walker and Sophia yes. uh, over in WA who are doing fantastic work. Yes. If we can get more MPs from the party in different states, I, I, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a definite. I think we can do it. At the moment, you've got where we, we just don't have those heads there. We've got MPs that really have no understanding. They don't understand it medically. They don't understand what it can do. Uh, I mean, you know, just the amount of revenue that can come into this country, um, both med medicinally and in the hemp industry, is astounding. And I just think if we get that information out there and we really show people the actual, you know, the figures of how we of how this could really uh, change things in a positive way, uh, give us more jobs, better, you know, just, you know, having a, a, having an actual industry of our own is very important. In Australia, back in the day, we used to have very strong industries here. And then unfortunately in the 90s, that started to change as things went overseas. But I think now- to China I'm, specifically, to China specifically. <laughs> specifically to China. Yes. Uh, engineering, I mean, because of with my father's engineering business, all of his friends, as soon as they heard about China, they all took off to China because they wanted to make money. But what they invariably have done is they sold out our manufacturing industry. Our entire manufacturing industry here is down the gurgler because everything comes from China. So I'd like to see us getting back to how we used to be, which is have our own thriving industries. And Australia's, uh, we had excellent industries and we were known for our quality. And why can't we go back I mean, there? I mean, mm. I mean, well, it's going back might not be the proper move, it's moving forward. Moving, moving forward. forward. Yes, yeah, so moving forward is what uh, give us the hope that people such as yourself that has come uh, into politics um, but playing the same school that the uh, traditional political parties want us to play is not going to work. We cannot yeah. compete with them in terms of money, but we can certainly compete with them by knocking door by door, recruiting people, and, and winning, the, winning the good attitude of those who don't want to come out, out of the closet. Um, the problem with, with democracy in this moment and the social media that it has been very comfortable for emerging politicians such as yourself and many others, not just in cannabis, but all, that they rather reach the people through the social media without checking their hands. Um, 20, 30 years ago, we had a similar situation in Venezuela when, where I am originally from. We had a dictatorship democracy dictatorship, a bipart bipartisan dictatorship of two political parties, like here, liberals and the other. And they were the owners of the system. Nobody was able to win. They set up the, the, the poor laws, they did the mathematical calculation. Nobody was able to break through until we started knocking door by door. 
knock in the door, door our door, and, and that strategy help us not only to win, but to defeat the system. It is much cheaper to do that, than to compete lobbying and trying to convince uh, politicians that are comfortable enough because they know that they're not going to lose. Mm. Um, more important is that the mentality, the alcoholic mentality that we have in Australia will never break through with yes. the solution that is good for everybody. Yes, yes, that's, that's right. My thinking, my thinking. And no, I think you're right. And I think the one thing you've got to remember with the Legalise Cannabis Australia Party is that, well, we're a combined group for, uh, of the Hemp Party. They were a whole separate group and then we came together. Yes. Um, and the essence of this party is grassroots activism. It is essentially really oh. what it's based on. And that is, how, that is how I like to roll. I like to be with the people. I don't want to be up here, over there. I want to just be with the people together, equal. And also being a registered nurse for nearly 20 years and working with all types of people. Um, yeah, I think I've got a pretty good lay of the land of what people are wanting. I listen to what people are wanting. And change is what they want. They want to move forward and they want change. But we want opportunity. We want growth, you know, and I think... I think once Australians, more Australians know about this, I think they will jump on board. I think we've got an opportunity now to really to, 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 to go to the next level. I really well, do believe that. Well, uh, like I said, the United States implemented this provision and the United States is dismantling this provision. And they are about to approve, uh, sign a bill very soon where uh, marijuana will be fully legalized. The, yeah. the prisoners have been in jail for this purpose will be released um, and will be a free market for everybody for everyone to compete. Um, yeah. And we should embrace the same thing. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, we have to do also like Americans did. They went door by door. They didn't hesitate. They yeah. did the grassroots, like you said. Um, here we are seven years after. Yeah, that's right. That's why I looked towards the Americans back in 2014, because I love their spirit. Yes. And their history of campaigning, it goes way back. I mean, it's a very, it's a really, I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in American politics. I, I'm quite keen on it. Um, but I, I, cause I love their history. It's a really interesting history. And um, Australia is interesting too, but the difference is you've got to remember their constitution is very different to any other yeah. countries. They have inherent freedoms that nobody else has. I mean, so that has enabled them to be able to, to move forward, except of course there's different states there that can be a bit prickly, quite difficult. But yeah, I think, like, I think, I think, uh, yeah, we're on the cusp. The question is this, and the question has to be asked to the Australian government, what's your excuse? What's your excuse? Now that we look around the world and we can see what's going on, to deny Australians the same thing, in my opinion, I think that's criminal. I really do, because you're making it so much harder for people to embrace and, you know, to look after their health. People should have total control over their own health in my view. And choice is very part of, of that, of that being empowered. Um, you just have to show people a few things and I think they would jump on board. But now what's holding us all back uh, are the regulations and the laws that if we have a quick look, how, how I think they're doing the harm now. I think that's pretty clear. And that's why I jumped on board because I'm, I've had enough. I've had enough and I've had enough on behalf of people here that have, that are in jail or that are currently having to go in front of the court because they took a plan because they've got a, you know, a particular medical condition. Um, we need innovation. Australia, Australia lost that. It's lost that it, because it's become so regulated. I, I think we need innovation uh, to come back. So that, and I'm hoping with this new election next you know, the election coming up that we're going to see some changes. I'm hoping, 
uh, th there's definitely a lot of indicators that people want change. But let's see, I guess, you know, when it comes to voting, how, how they're going to go. Yeah, at the end of the day, this is change will happen in the in the polls. It's not going to happen any, any, anywhere else. People have to go out and use the power yes. that democracy allows us to do. That's right. The power that the people has is voting. You don't vote, yes. we cannot achieve anything that we're, that we're talking. So the motivation for people, governments don't want the people to vote, period. They want the status quo to remain because they want people to stay ignorant and to stay comfortably numb. Um, <laughs> cannabis is a complete different movement. Yes, it has the light or the torch of that light has been kept by hippies and also narcos in the last 80 years, but time has changed. Now, when you see a political party such as legalized cannabis party in Australia, where you have doctors, engineers, all kinds of professionals, this is, not, this is not a joke anymore. This is something that the, the current politicians don't want to embrace the change. They will be bought out eventually, even if they don't want to, because the change is happening. That's um, correct. People such as yourself with that passion that you talk, that <laughs> energy that you talk. <laughs> I know that if you were elected, we'll, we will have a voice in the parliament that will resonate in the heart and the soul of many. Michel, what, if you were to send a message to those that makes the decisions in our country, what would you tell them? Okay, right. Well, I'd probably, well, basically, the laws are doing more harm. When it comes to a point, when your laws are doing more harm than the actual plant itself or the potential industry itself, you know there's a problem. <laughs> um, and I th 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 that is why I'm here. Uh, because after nearly 10 years of doing my own research, being at uni, traveling around, meet, you know, going to Canada, meeting a whole... The other thing too, just before I say this, the one wonderful thing about cannabis, it really brings people together. Yes. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. I mean, I'll go to a conference and I'll be surrounded by doctors, nurses, allied health, scientists, industry. I mean, it's it's something that everybody can be involved in. It, it, there's plenty of room for everybody. It doesn't have to be one person or two or a group. It's for all of us to share. Uh, and I, I just think the time is now. I think, you know, for 30 years... We've had the so Mardi Gras, 30 years we've been fighting, they've been fighting for prohibition. And I think enough is enough. And I think the, I think Australians have spoken. I, I We just have to look at the uh, surveys that are coming out about what people want. Uh, and it clearly demonstrates that the, the more people want cannabis legalised than not. So what it comes down to me is when the laws become more harmful, then we have a duty to step up and to, to I don't know, to change those laws. That That is essentially what I'm about. You yeah, said it. It has to happen. You said it. <laughs> change the law. The law is wrong. They have to be changed. Simple. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. That's right. So that's what we're, we're all fighting for. And if we can get a seat in the Senate, uh, it gives us that opportunity to to do that and uh you know when i look to let say dr walker i look at sophia uh they are just beacons of light and i think they're wonderful people uh, in their own rights and they've just you know that the one thing about cannabis is that you will people will learn if they allow themselves to learn it is compassion first and foremost uh that's what I've learned. It's been cannabis is my teacher. That's uh, essentially how what it's been my teacher for 10 years. Michelle, yeah. you get three drunkards, they start a fight. You get three, <laughs> you get three stoners, you start a party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
That's right. So a big what you're going to start seeing from the legalized cannabis party now is there'll be a lot more engagement to all social media posts explaining to you know uh, dispelling myths. Uh, you know we've got a lot of myths about cannabis even in the actual community cannabis community there are myths so I think if we can get out the fact there and people actually see for themselves with their own two eyes that we're talking you know this isn't a um, I think people haven't taken it seriously but they are now because medically there is no denying what it can do to patients there's 80 no years of darkness creates a lot of struggle in the minds of many. So we are the light of that darkness. And that light attracts a lot of butterflies, but also attracts a lot of moth. So what we need to make sure is that we keep shining so those moth also becomes butterfly and we are and we uh, become the factor of change and energize you know, that change. That's right. The you know, us, our you know, beauty, you know, our mission right. of life. <laughs> and what I find in the in the movement, there are people that are like lighthouses. I think you're a lighthouse. What I mean by that is you're a beacon. You're a beacon of light. And I, I, I've met quite a few people like that. They're like lighthouses for people to have hope, go towards that light, be a part of that positivity, that change. Um, and then I think also walking the talk is important. I mean, if you're going to talk about the endocannabinoid system, at least understand what the endocannabinoid system is and yeah. look after your ECS, because if you look after your ECS, it will look after you. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had an extraordinary interview with Michelle Istambik. She's running to the Senate in in our great country of Australia, this a country of light to the world. And I'm very sure with your passion, your knowledge and your vision, we will make a difference in the parliament and we resonate once again in, in the people that need help. Um, and they need the collaboration of the ruling class. Hemp can help to better food, can bring better food, can bring us medicine, we can build homes, we can, we can do clothing, but more important, we can bring people together for a better world, which is what we are, which is what we are all after. Um, I don't wanna say that I'm sorry, I'm sorry for my English, I, I speak a lot of language in my mind, sometimes I don't even understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> But then, oh, you can never apologize for that. I uh, think it's wonderful. And I, you know, you're clearly a very intelligent, articulate man. I mean, you know, it's not easy when you know multiple languages. <laughs> it's, yeah. We'll make it happen. Nice. Michelle, yeah. we are broadcasting from Perth, Australia. We have Michelle in Canberra. Thank you very much. And I hope the best. And because whatever happened to you, it happens to the party, which I also a proud member of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ramon. It's been my absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, let's fight the good fight for the Amen. future. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.